So welcome back to Walk with the Doc. Uh, this is January 2017. Our topic today is winter safety. So we try to um, exercise obviously throughout the week, throughout the year, living in Pennsylvania with the weather as it is. It's not always cooperative. Um, if you have the option to exercise indoors, great. If you prefer or to go outdoors or you don't have the opportunity to go indoors, um, how to make sure that you're safe when you're outdoors. Um, so that's really our topic and uh, get to decide to, wh why do we exercise? Why do we do what we do in terms of indoors or outdoors? Um, and that is because we want to reduce our risk for heart disease, for stroke, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, sleep apnea. We also exercise because of orthopedic reasons to get our bones stronger. Also cognitively, we want to make sure that we're a more of a happy population. We feel, it feels good when you're out there walking and also maybe talking with a friend. So we exercise for many reasons. Many of you have seen this particular handout and I have a bunch of them to hand out for today. These are the new guidelines for exercise. You've probably seen it in the office when you've come in too. How many minutes per week recommended to exercise? So I'll leave this for you at the end. So this is really why we do it. The recommendation is at least 30 minutes five days a week, so talking about a total of 150 minutes per week. And that's in addition to kind of what we're going to do today, and that's resistance exercise. So exercising either with the bands, you may remember these from our previous exercise, <clears throat> or whatever else you have at home to provide resistance. So it's the resistance training a couple days a week, and then also it's aerobic training as well. So I'll have this for you at the end. Okay, so what about exercise outdoors? I have to ask ourselves, well, what are we going to do? Walk. walk. Walk is good. Walk is cheap. Uh, you can do it alone or with a friend, as opposed to bicycling. As I heard from my daughter recently, um, fat biking. Everyone hear fat biking? So they're giant tires, and you actually pedal on crushed or packed snow. So, but there's also snowshoeing. There's downhill skiing, there's also cross-country skiing. But if you want to walk, that's obviously the simplest thing. When do we go? Preferably the daytime, right? So um, we don't really go at night, but we'll talk about that as well, too. So I, I actually would recommend not below 40 degrees. As you know, when you're going against a cold breeze in the cold temperature, it's harder to breathe sometimes. Patients with coronary disease with angina will tell you it's harder to breathe, it's harder to get the same distance that you normally do in warmer weather. So, and is there precipitation out there? Is it raining? Is it snowing? Has it just done those two things? What kind of surface will you be on? Will it be an icy patch? Fresh snow? Maybe uh, plowed snow, so you have these giant piles of snow like in the parking lots? Will the sidewalks be clear? Maybe they won't be clear. So think about when you're planning your, your day or your exercise, when will I go? Where will I go? And how will I be safe on the road or the sidewalk or the walking path like at the uh, YMCA campus here? So think about where you're going to go and what you're going to do. And that's if you're walking, of course. <clears throat> and also watch out for the wind because that makes a difference as well. Um, in terms of warming up, I recommend you warm up inside the house before you go, maybe with the clothes you have on now. So as we've done in all our other walks, arm circles, stretching, maybe walk in place. So maybe five or ten minutes get a little bit warmer so when you go out you're not freezing cold as well. Um, th that's something that you can continue, so maybe then put on a couple layers and then maybe go out into the garage where it's a little cooler but not as cold as being outdoors. And for a few more minutes, exercise and warm up in the garage or in a sheltered place from the wind. Then begin your walk. All right. So in terms of your walk, what about safety? Does anyone know where you're going? Okay. So um, your spouse or a friend or family, say I'm going around this part of the neighborhood. I'm leaving now and I might be back in about 15-20 minutes. Or maybe leave a note. I left at 1 o'clock, I'm going <coughs> clockwise around the cul-de-sac area and I'm coming back. So those are things you want to make sure you do. Um, and what else do you want to bring with you? Phone. Cell, phone. Cell phone. Exactly right. So, and not to be texting or, or calling when you're, when you're walking. I almost hit a, a young fellow here coming out of the Y. He had his hand like this. 
uh, with the phone over like this, and he never even looked, and I was coming this way. So be very, very careful. Um, so a cell phone in case of emergency for you or someone else. As you may know, there's new technology, sort of GPS trackers that can actually transmit live. So if you have somebody at home with their computer or an app, they can see where you are live around the neighborhood. That's sort of good or bad, I guess, but, um, but they, they know where you are at all times. But the safer thing is to carry your cell phone and also go in a loop, go in a circle. So if you go out for maybe 10, 15 minutes and come back and say, okay, I can do another loop rather than going out straight for 15 and say, well, that's, I kind of bit off more than I can chew. So think about a loop or think about a path that way. Um, and that way you know what the road service looks like if you want to do it for a second or a third time. So those are some safety things. If you're around dusk or dawn, or maybe it's uh, cloudy like even today, or gloomy like January has been, um, what about reflective gear? So I have from, I'm gonna share some of these things with you here too. So again, this is more for people that are doing it when it gets really dark, but vests like this that are very reflective. This one is my favorite police chief, loaned me this one here. <laughs> because he's a triathlon kind of guy. So you can't miss this, right? This is pretty simple. Um, many of the new clothes have reflective uh, material in them. So even your sneakers are reflective, okay? Also with gloves, sometimes your, uh, your tops or your jerseys will have something that's reflective that way. Um, I know in my street, I have people have, they have dogs in our neighborhood and they walk at night. So they actually have, here's one here, it's a headlamp that you can put on and it not only lights up, it also has a flashing mechanism. So that way someone coming at you will see it. I don't know if it's on or not, but, um, but it, it will flash. And some of them are also red and they blink and things like that. So, so keep that in mind if you're again near dusk or dawn. Also carrying a flashlight. It's not all about having a flashlight and pointing it down. It's make sure you swing it. Because when you're coming from a distance in a car and you see a light that's going like this, it's easier to spot than if it's just hitting straight down to the ground and a person probably will never see it. Okay, so you're gonna carry your flashlight a little tidbit on that as well. But preferably in the daytime when it's sunny. Uh, the other piece of that too is um, if it's bright sunny and there's snow on the ground, maybe the drivers can't see you because of all the reflection of the bright sun. So be mindful of that as well. Uh, recommendation two, if you're walking, do you walk with or against traffic? Yes. Again, okay, right. All right, 60, 40 there. Um, yeah, so it, right, it's against. And if you're riding a bicycle, it's with. with the traffic. Okay, good. So that's kind of consistency on the highway as well. Um, and again, if it's sunny and all that, what's the first thing we think about when you go outdoors? Sunscreen is right. Okay, very, very important. Not just because it's January or February. Um, and the other thing that I'm going to go through some of the clothing items with you here too, but uh, people talk about snow shoveling. There's a little pause in the crowd there. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of sh snow shoveling at all. Um, we we kind of look at it as a chore. We got to get it done. We got to hurry up and we got to get it done. And we sort of put these things on ourselves that are probably sometimes too much for us to handle because it can be wet, it can be heavy. Um, the simple one inch or so where you push is fine, but you might get behind the eight ball by working hard, you perspire, and then you keep working and working, you almost forgot you're out there for two hours. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm also not a fan of shoveling mulch in the spring when it's wet and heavy. Okay, so be careful. That's also orthopedically, you have to be very careful about those things too. So, but walking is fun and, and uh, getting out all, all throughout the year. Let me go through some uh, other items with you too. It's got to stay warm. So, what parts of our body do we have to be concerned about? Right, so you lose heat from your head, the back of your neck and also your hands and also your feet. So here's a hat, for instance, from my, my future son-in-law. He got me this for Christmas. So again, around the ears and then around the back of the neck that way too. So you're protected and you also have a visor in case it's sunny. Nice. So he's a good son-in-law, I guess. <laughs> and also gloves. Um, 
go through some of these. All right, so who prefers gloves or mittens? Mittens, mittens because it right, keeps you warmer in terms of that too. So your fingers are warming each other as they're together inside the mittens too. So, and also they go further up your, uh, your wrist, keeping yourself warmer that way. Here's one from a blast from the past. For those who like to, to uh, use a, a snowblower, okay? That's probably a little bit more safe for you too. But again, nice in the back, around the neck, and you can pull in the front too as far as the wind. And I also want to keep our feet warm, of course, so an extra pair of socks. Uh, the dilemma with the feet when you're walking is it's probably not good to be walking in winter boots. Orthopedically, you don't get a good step or you don't get good orthotics with that, if you will. Same with just plain old rubber boots for snow. You're wearing two pairs of socks, but you're not really steady on your feet. So walk when it's safe and think about sneakers or true walking shoes. If it's not safe for those items, then maybe you shouldn't be out walking. But you've got to keep your feet uh, warm as well. Also, some of the new technology, the whole concept is to wick the perspiration away from your skin. So you're not having a layer of cold water on your, on your skin, then you get cold yourself. So this kind of brings the perspiration away from your skin into your clothing. So again, a nice, this is an, actually an Under Armour item here, but it pulls the uh, perspiration away and you have another layer on top of that to keep you warm. And again, this is another one with reflective gear. And this is a little, little odd, so if you don't like, if you can't decide about gloves or mittens, <laughs> this one is a, a little bit of each. And then of course, um, this is another one here, Under Armour. So just a, a beanie hat to wear underneath another hat if you need an, a second layer on your head as well. And then for those that want to do the earmuffs, we have these here as well. So um, again, you want to be able to go in layers. You want to be able to be seen with reflective gear if you can, uh, but preferably go in the daytime where there's not an issue of, re of the, uh, not being seen by the drivers of cars, other people on the highway as well. So to sum up for a second, so decide if you're going to go outside or not. Very important decision based on the temperature, precipitation, the surface you're walking on. Next again would be layers of clothes. And then I guess the last part is just common sense. Do I really need to go out today? Or is there a better day coming tomorrow when it comes to the weather? So think about those items too. So, Any questions? Yes? How do you feel about indoor treadmills with small kind of jackets? Um, everybody hear the question? So treadmills, yeah, I like treadmills a lot. Great way to, to complement what you do outdoors or at the gym. Um, I think the, the corollary to what we talked about today was that when you're outdoors, you probably won't go as fast as you would on a treadmill at home. So you don't want to be trying to beat your record or keep your timing up because with your wearing the heavy clothing, walking in outdoor conditions, not the same as being indoors on a treadmill, but I like them a lot. I think the key thing about a treadmill is you want to be able to um, raise up the level, but going on flat surface like that for a long time does not really give you the endurance and stamina that you're trying to, to build up to. So, yes, sir? What about, do what, what, you have a feeling uh, which one is better for you if you can do them? The treadmill, the elliptical, or just a, a, a bike? It's, it's a stationary bike? All indoors or? All indoors. Yeah, okay. So the bicycle outdoors is actually a good exercise as well. Um, I'd like to use them as complementary items, to be honest with you. They, they do different muscles as well. Um, and again, the same comment before. If you do the same thing every time without branching out, you're probably not getting the full workout that you really deserve. So but I like them all. A little coordination needed for all three of them in a different way. Um, but orthopedically, probably the bicycle is for people that have difficulty with balance and other issues with their back. So the recumbent bicycle versus the upright bicycle. So I, I like them all. Anybody else? Okay. Amy's our trainer here from the YMCA. And um, we're going to give you an area up front here. We're going to clear, we'll clear this area out for you. No, I'm okay with that. Okay.